I remember the happiest day of my life was when I found out I was going to be a competitor at the National Speech and Debate Tournament. I was so excited, and I knew that competing at nationals was going to be one of the best experiences of my entire life. But all of this happiness would eventually end in despair. You see, when I competed in nationals, I didn't do as well as I had hoped, and it hurt for a really long time. But while I was there, one of my competitors, uh, Tram Nguyen, gave a speech that explained why I felt that way. Her speech was based off of the three unalienable rights, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. She explained how when we really think about it, the pursuit of happiness seems rather selfish, and it needs to be changed. According to Ruth Whitman, author of America the Anxious, how our pursuit of happiness is creating a nation of nervous wrecks, states that despite the fact that happiness is a multi-billion dollar industry, the U.S. is still one of the least content countries in the world. Our pursuit of happiness does not lead to satisfaction or fulfillment. So it is important that we replace happiness with a more meaningful desire to live our lives with purpose. A happy life is an easy life, a life full of little concern and frustration. In contrast, living a life of purpose allows us to see the world from outside of ourselves. So first, we'll establish how the pursuit of happiness actually leads to unhappiness and unfulfillment. And then, we will rewrite our constitutions to include the pursuit of purpose. See, we are surrounded by the idea of happiness every day in our culture. We hear it in our music. Don't worry. <laughs> Be happy. <laughs> or taste it in our food. <laughs> happy meals. <laughs> oh, I know you still get them. <laughs> <laughs> we all want to be happy. But is all of this effort really paying off? Are we truly becoming happier? Obviously not. According to a series of studies done by Dr. Aris Moss at UC Berkeley, she found that the more people value happiness, the more likely they will feel disappointed. She theorizes she theorizes that it's this idea of focusing on the self instead of others that led to feelings of isolation and loneliness. And just so I can make my point clear, the Salt Lake Tribune found that Utah's suicide rate has shot up 46.5% since 1999. And we are all left to wonder why. Thankfully, Professor Shigehiro Oishi and Ed Diener from the University of Virginia have been able to shed some light on this subject. From a sample of 140,000 people across 132 different countries suffering with depression, they found that it wasn't happiness or unhappiness that predicted suicide. The variable that did predict was me. Those who felt that their lives had meaning or purpose did not take their own lives. And a study done by the Journal of Positive Psychology found that a happy life is linked to selfish behaviors, being a taker. In contrast, living a life of purpose has been linked to being a giver. And it resulted in a boost of psychological health in the long run. When we choose to change our focus from ourselves to others, we find meaning. When I competed at nationals, <laughs> I was so excited. And I found out that there was literally over a thousand other high schoolers across the country vying for the title. But I knew it didn't matter, because I would win. <laughs> I had worked so hard 
and worked so long, so many tireless hours and sleepless nights, and I knew that it would all be worth it on this one moment. And sure, I was competing against kids that had been nationally recognized for years, but so what? I had just been recognized as the best orator in the state of Utah, and according to the MSDA, I was 30th in the entire country. I had this in the bag, and I wasn't going to be happy with second place. But I didn't even get that far. I was eliminated after the first round. When I heard Trom Nguyen talk about the pursuit of purpose, I started asking myself, what was my purpose? Why did I even go to nationals in the first place? And I remember, I wanted to win because I wanted to prove to my novices, my friends, and everybody at my high school that they can do anything that they set their minds to. I wanted to give credit to my parents who had worked so hard to give me everything I've ever had in my life and say thank you the only way I knew I could. I wanted to inspire people and I wanted to change minds. And the more I thought about it, the more I realized that at that tournament, I did, in fact, accomplish my purpose. I competed against a 14-year-old girl who gave a speech entitled Hashtag YouTube. She shared the tragic experience of a friend of hers who had been sexually assaulted in middle school. After I gave my speech, the round ended and we all left, and she came up to me and sheepishly confessed that she didn't tell the whole truth. At 14, she had also been sexually assaulted and she was too scared to tell anybody for fear of mockery or being made fun of. But because of me and because of my story of hope, she was inspired and decided that she would finally tell the truth and hopefully inspire others. A 14-year-old girl was inspired by me, and because my focus wasn't on her, but was rather on a trophy, that I didn't win. I isolated myself and hated myself for months. And if I'm being completely honest, <laughs> I still do. And I don't want anyone else to ever feel this way. So you know what? I vote that we change the three unalienable rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of purpose.